Hello, welcome to the channel. It is Sunday evening for me, but good morning or good afternoon, wherever you happen to be. Uh, welcome to do my efforts to make an album. Um, and I am still doing that. Um, this in whole process is in fact a uh, an exercise in doing the same thing over and over again, but slightly different um, every time, if possible. Uh, so... Still working on Weasels, uh, and this is Can I Write an Album, episode 24. One, two, three. And slight correction, it's Can an Album Be Written, because I am actually doing this uh, in the company of friends, um, and still working on a track of James's at the moment, so, um, yeah. And uh, I've got a new mix of the song, so... I've committed to a bass track, so that's bounced down now, and is uh, is adequate. <laughs> I'm quite happy with it, but um, uh, I then also bust that out to a bass amp uh, modulator, sorry, emulation. Um, one actually that I always used to use with GarageBand, which is the modern stack. Um, and I just I love it. Like as soon as I turn it on, the bass just sounds pretty crisp, really nice. Um, so I've added that in there, um, and then panned those two, hard right and hard left, and added some distortion. Um, for the first time, actually, instead of using an amp for that, I've actually just used the distortion plugin um, in um, in Logic. Um, so yeah, quite pleased with the results, um, and so now it has that sort of grime on one side and really nice, sort of clean, smooth signal on the right side. And then, what else have I done? Uh, I then also, as per James's request, you be able to see here actually, I've um, shelved the volume um, off completely on the entire electric part right up until the last dismount from the chorus uh, and into the solo so it just comes in on that last lick and then goes straight into the sort of solo which isn't really actually a solo just need to do something like that but um, that's in there but what I did is I have then panned all the way to the right and put um, the chrome chroma verb which is another stock plug-in in Logic on that just to give it a bit of presence and what I realized as well which is why ultimately I decided to put it on the right hand side is the more treble of the uh, like the neck uh, the neck of the bridge pickup I think James used the more trebly side of his telly is on the left hand side so then that still remains there you've got the sort of more bass response from the neck um, in the right speaker with the solo then layered over the the, the, the solo is actually still coming through on in the center on the main track but then the chroma verb is coming through on the just the right side um, it's panned hard right um, I haven't gone in between or anything it's just panned hard right so it gives it more presence on the right um, it doesn't crowd out I think the neck pickup of the telly because it's not occupying the same frequencies. And then on the right, the left, then you've still got the, say, the sort of, uh, the bridge pickup. So, uh, quite happy with that. And, and then what else? I've done a little bit of work on the drums, not much. Um, just the bass drum, um, I've, give it, I've given the whole drum kit a compression plug-in. Again, just stock from the factory presets um, on Logic, which has sounded quite good. And I feel like the drums could do with more work. I don't really know what I'm doing. I would like to have some help on that. And I'm thinking about asking maybe someone, but uh, what else? I think that's it. Uh, James, I think the vocal, um, so James was concerned about the vocal performance when we listened to her on the last sort of big podcast sort of type episode. Um, 
but in in terms of the quality the quality that's um obviously i can't remember what mike he now went for in the end let me just so mike got so james got the uh akg uh c214 um which is kind of uh, i think it's slightly higher price point than my road but it's considered to be in the i've seen comparisons of the two so it's sort of in the same kind of vague price bracket it's not too far off um the only reason i say that is because obviously there's going to be a comparison between vocals i've recorded here with james and vocals that um he'll record himself and so we'll, we'll kind of get a chance to compare those two mics which is interesting but so anyway the performance itself um i know james wasn't that happy with it i mean it's it's fine like but it does um at times sound stilted because i think he is literally writing and singing at pretty much the same time um so but um we're expecting new vocals from him to go into this um and then we ditched the acoustic guitar part in the end because uh although the picking part that i'd worked out uh would go well in the um in a live version with him playing the off beats and me playing the picking part um, and maybe some playing an upright bass. That's what we're kind of thinking. Or a cello. That was the other thing we talked about. Um, I'm thinking bass, upright bass. I think we went cello in the podcast. Anyway. Um, however, I do think sort of kicking in in the second verse, there should be uh, like a strummy acoustic part. So I've been working on that. I'm going to add that in next. Um, and so that will just, it'll run through, I'll keep it to a minimum, but it'll, it'll go through the the first chorus. It'll go through the second verse. Don't know what's going to happen after the bridge. Um, and there'll be some of it in, the, sorry, solo, I suppose, bridge, whatever you want to call it. It'll play through the second verse and play through the bridge. Um, and yeah, so I've worked out a, uh, I've worked out a pretty sparse part, which I kind of mirrors James's offbeat, um, but it's like. Uh, so, and uh, just going to add that in. Let's see what it sounds like. I've been seeing all his faces in the mirror sometimes I've been scratching the 